Hi, my name is Alyssa Aska and I am a composer. In this video, I am going to discuss one of my gamified pieces, the Schleiter, for voice, cello, gamer, and live audiovisuals. The Schleiter is the first gamified piece I ever composed. I consider it to be a gamified art song. In this work, a game player explores a fantasy 3D world while two performers play in response to the visuals. I had two main objectives for the creation of this work. First, I wanted to create a gamified art song, whatever that means. And two, I wanted to use both live instruments, the cello and the voice, as well as game players in the performance. I knew I would need the following physical components. I would need a score for both the vocalist and the cellist. I would also need the game. And in this case, the game was created and designed in Unity and controlled by a separate player during the performance. And I would also need some means of producing and processing audio, in this case, a ma max patch. And this controls all of the audio processing inputs and outputs to and from Unity. The end result was a gamified work, which used the gaming environment in some way as a basis for the form of the piece. While the instrumentalists do receive a normal score, they have to respond to the events of the game in real time. At the same time, sound events and sound changes in the electronics are triggered by the actions of the game player. To increase the strength of this link, I also gave the instrumentalists some control over the game play. The volume of the cellist affects the speed of the player, and the volume of the vocalist affects the turn or look sensitivity, which actually makes it more difficult for the player. These choices were made due to text setting, which I will talk about later, along with other details of the piece. First, I'll talk about form, and more specifically, using the environment as a type of score and the primary driver of the overall form. I wanted to experiment with a 3D environment, and as I was just learning how to use the Unity game engine, I opted for a simple environment using mostly downloaded assets and a basic terrain. I decided that some of the terrain objects would have an influence over the sound environment as the player approached them, and being that I was set in the outdoors, I made water and trees responsible for these sound changes. Therefore, I drew a sketch of a possible map with water and tree placements. I then created the outdoor environment in Unity. I also created a stone path so that the player would somewhat be guided to follow it to its end. At the end of this path is a small gated village. This gated village represents the second section of the piece. And with everything closer together, this would make the temporal structure within this gated village somewhat faster. In the outdoor environment, the player must walk further distances to have impact on the sound. While games without a visible goal are something I explore later, for this particular game, I wanted to create some goals for the game player. I thought of these as a kind of virtual score or part for the player. Therefore, in each section, the player is instructed to collect books. And there is a continuous display showing the player how many books they have collected and how many remain to be picked up. If the player tries to enter the village prior to picking up enough books, they will be presented with text that tells them that they need to finish picking up books before entering. This goal forces the player to explore the entire map, searching for books and triggering sounds. Which brings us to exactly how the live interaction works during the performance. I will discuss now the following three components. The written score for the two instrumental performers, the electronic sounds triggered during gameplay, and the effects of the instrumental sounds on the gameplay, so information from the Max Patch into the game software. During the performance, 
The player walks around the environment and picks up books. But why books? Because this is technically an art song and contains a text. And I also wanted to work with the variable form that gamification lends itself to. So I assign a fragment of the text to each of the books, and these books are randomly distributed throughout both the outside area and the area inside the village. When a player picks up a book, the text is displayed on the screen. This is important to the score because each performer is given a score with two components, the main score and the score that instructs them how to respond to the book text. So the cellist, for example, has a continuous background loop and the vocalist has a score that they must sing through prior to beginning the game, which gets recorded to a buffer and stored. More on that later. But they also have words written above fragments, which they must perform whenever that text appears on a screen. So when, for example, the player picks up a book, the performers will stop what they are doing currently and play the fragment that corresponds with that book's text. When they finally pick up the book fragments and return to the city wall, the game pauses for a moment before letting them in and displays the poem text not in its original order, but actually in the order in which it was picked up, and they must play through these fragments in this rearranged order. Then they may finally enter the village. Inside the village, the gameplay is similar, but the performers have slightly different instructions uh, in terms of responding to the number of books pick picked up. So instead of replaying fragments as each book is picked up, they're instead instructed to alter their playing style or do other things. If a player moves to the church door and all of the books have finally been picked up, then the text appears in its original, unaltered form and they can finally play through the fragments uninterrupted and in the correct order. The triggered elements are also related to the live sounds. There are two types of triggered sounds in the game. Those triggered when the player picks up a book, 
and those triggered when a player gets within a certain range of objects such as trees and water. At the beginning of the performance, prior to the gameplay starting, the vocalist performs the entire collection of fragments in order, and this is recorded in a buffer and stored. Whenever the player picks up a book, a new sound is triggered from this buffer. Each of these triggered sounds plays back at a different speed, creating a sort of proportional canon. The cello sound is also recorded into a buffer. In the case of this performance, I actually pre-recorded the sound to prevent uh, bleed through from the live performance. Sounds using these buffers are then triggered whenever the player walks close enough to trees or to water with each having a unique manipulation of the sound. Finally, this leads us to the topic of text setting. Why did I choose to do an art song and why set it this way? For example, why rearrange the text? For me as a composer, form or temporal architecture is one of the most important aspects of my work. With gamified art, the form is in some way indeterminate. With an art song, often the poem provides some sort of framework with which a composer can give form to the piece, or the text itself is somehow embedded into the formal structure. In this case, by rearranging the text, I am setting the text in an indeterminate way, just as a player will never be able to recreate their exact gameplay in a video game every time they play. The order in which the books are picked up will vary slightly every time, and the triggered both live and electronic sounds along with it. When the player finally arrives at the village, the fragments are then played in the order they appeared, and this links the musical fragments in the larger part of the first section of the piece to the end of it. Another way in which the gameplay relates to the text setting has to do with the voice and the cello. For those not familiar with the poem Das Verschleierte Bild des Seis by Friedrich Schiller, here is the text of the original with an English translation. It is beyond the scope of this video to deconstruct the text extensively, but the most important ideas to take away are that the poem involves a, a young person seeking knowledge and truth and guided by a hierophant who wants to warn him against seeking it in a destructive way and looking behind the veil of knowledge to obtain this knowledge in a destructive way. And so I decided to have the cello play the, the role, so to speak, of the hierophant and the, boy, and the voice plays that of the oracle or the temptation behind the veil. And the cello's amplitude increases the speed of the player, so it actually makes their path easier, while the voice's amplitude increases the look sensitivity. And so this actually makes it more difficult for the player to control where they're going and what they're looking at. Sounds triggered that contain vocal sounds veil actually all of the other sounds because they're continuous. And this includes environmental sounds, and this also includes those played by the live musicians. And while the sounds that are include cello sounds that become triggered actually provide environmental cues and clarity of environment. So tree sounds and water sounds, for example. And when the player does finally enter the village and nearing this kind of end goal of the game and uh, looking behind the veil of knowledge, the triggered voice sounds actually start to become replayed at extremely fast speeds rather than slow. And that really it obscures this environment even more. And so the text setting is therefore embedded into the gameplay along with the interaction between the player, the instrumentalist, and the game. And this goes along with the design of the space, terrain, and objects. You can find a link to a video recording of the performance below if you are interested. Thank you.